Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a pattern in Illustrator that is hollow circles that have built-in shading. You can place anything you like underneath this pattern. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What we're going to do is to create this red pattern swatch. Now to see a little bit more clearly what it looks like, this is the pattern that we're going to create. So we're going to create a pattern that is the background with the hole in it and the shading. And through that hole, we can see things behind. Now what I've done is just added a new layer to the document and dropped into it one of the built-in patterns that come with Illustrator. With this path selected, you can see that I could actually change this pattern to something different. And the red pattern over the top with its drop shadow is just going over the top of whatever it is behind it. It could be a solid color, it could be a painted background, it could be another pattern, it could be all sorts of things. But what we're going to do is see how to create this pattern that is holes rather than being circles. I'm starting here with a new blank document. It can be any size you like. Mine is a thousand points by a thousand points. I'm going to start with a square, so I'm going to click on the rectangle tool here. I'm going to set my fill color to the red I want to use, and I'm going to set no stroke. I'm just going to click here because I want to create a rectangle of a fixed size. So I want mine to be 100 points by 100 points, so I'll just click OK. And here is my square. Now I'm going to select the ellipse tool, and I want to add a circle. So let's just deselect this shape, go back and get the ellipse tool, and this time I'm going to choose a different fill color so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to again click in the document, and this time I want an ellipse that is smaller than the square. 75 points by 75 points is a really good size, so I'll just click OK. And here is my ellipse. It's a circle because it has the same height and width. I'm going to place my ellipse over my backing rectangle or my backing square, select both of them, and I want to make sure that they're perfectly lined up. So I'm going to click Horizontal Align Center and then Vertical Align Center. They're over each other's center points, so that's a good start. Now what I need to do is to knock this out. I need to subtract the circle from the square, so I'm going to select both shapes, and I'm going to the Pathfinder. To do that, I'll choose Window and then Pathfinder. Nope, there it was up there, so let's just go and get it again. I want to choose the minus front option because what I want to do is to subtract the front shape, which is this orange shape, from the back shape, which is the maroon or dark red shape. So I'm going to click minus front. And there is my shape, and that's going to be the basis for my pattern. The next step is to add the drop shadow to our shape. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little more closely, and I'm going for the selection tool. I'm going to open up this panel because I want to make sure that I have this compound layer selected. This is this compound path that we've created. And now I'll choose Effect, and then Stylize, and Drop Shadow. And I'm going to click Preview so I can see my drop shadow, and I'm just going to apply the standard drop shadow. You could choose a different drop shadow effect if you wanted. You could make it more or less blurry. You could change its opacity, but this is fine for me, so I'm just going to click OK. Now we're going to have problems with this shape if we go and create a pattern for it, because we're going to get some bleeding of the shadow over the edges. To avoid that happening, we're going to have to clip the shadow so that it doesn't extend beyond the edges of our shape. To do that, we're going to create another black square. So I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to make it 100 points by 100 points. But this time I want to fill it with jet black. Now this is not jet black, and I can tell by double clicking on the color here. And you can see that its RGB value is 35, 31, 32. Well, I want it to be 0, 0, 0, because that is pure black. And for this effect, I need to make sure that I'm using pure black, because this is going to be a mask. So I'll just click OK. 
And now I'm going to move this so that it's directly over the underlying shape. So I'm going to just select both of them and center them up. Just make sure that it's perfect. I'm now going to select this top shape, the black filled shape, and choose Edit Cut. That now places it on the Windows clipboard or on the Mac clipboard. Now I'm going to reselect the shape that I'm working with and I'm going to its opacity setting here in the Appearance panel. If you can't see the Appearance panel, choose Window and Appearance and that will show it to you. We're going to click here on the Opacity setting and what we want to do is to make a mask. So I'm going to click Make Mask. And now I'm going to click in this mask area here to select it and I need to paste into this mask the shape that we just put on the clipboard. So I'm going to choose Edit, Paste in Place and that pastes the mask directly over the underlying shape. The fact that we can see nothing at the moment is just fine. Let's go back to our Opacity setting and we want to click here to invert the mask. And now we can see the mask in place and you can see that it's blocked out the drop shadow where it was appearing outside the shape. But anywhere that it's inside the shape, the drop shadow is still showing. We also want to click here on Knockout Group and Opacity and Mask Define Knockout Shape. We just want to make sure that these settings are enabled. Now before I finish here, this is critical. If you don't do this step, nothing's going to work. You need to reselect here to stop editing your opacity mask. It's the thing that you're going to forget and it happens, but if nothing works from here on in, you'll know that you need to go back to this opacity setting and reselect this shape because now we're going back to working on the document, not the opacity mask. I'm just going to click here to move out of here. So this is our shape and this is our pattern piece. So to make it into a pattern with it selected, we're going to choose Object, Pattern, Make. Click OK because the pattern piece has been added to the swatch. Now we're going to create a pattern and I'm going to use a brick offset, but if you just wanted a regular pattern, you would just type 100 points into this width and height box because these are linked, they're both going to be 100. Now I found that 100 is probably just a little bit big because we're seeing a little bit of white between these two shapes. So I'm actually going to take it down and make it 99. And 99 is a good pattern piece, but you'll see that this is just a regular pattern. And if you want this, this regular grid shape pattern, you can click Done and it'll be done. I'm just going to save a copy actually so that we have it in a minute that we can see. But I think a more sophisticated pattern is to use brick by row and use a half brick offset. And now I'm going to click Done because this second pattern will now be created in our pattern swatch. So there's the second pattern. I'm going to press Control 0 to zoom out because I want to see the edges of my document. I'm going to take my pattern piece and just tuck it out of the way because I don't need that anymore, except if I need to make changes to it. And now I'm going to create a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. Now I have a really handy script that lets me do that. And if you want to learn a bit more about scripting in Illustrator, go and watch my video training on scripting in Illustrator. And this script just makes a rectangle the size of the artboard, but you could just draw it yourself if you prefer. It's easy enough to do. Now I'm going to select this rectangle. I'm going to make sure that I have the Fill option selected and I'm going to fill it with my pattern. Well, this is the more sophisticated of the two patterns. You can see that it has the shading through it, but there's also this pattern piece that you could use. It's a simpler pattern. Don't worry about these slight lines that you see through the pattern because they're just a product of trying to show the pattern on the computer screen. If you were to zoom in, you wouldn't see those lines any longer. But I'm going back to this slightly more sophisticated pattern because I quite like that. Now let's add something behind it so we can prove to ourselves that it is a transparent hole here. I'm going to grab my path that is the same 
size as my artboard and I'm just going to drag and drop it onto this icon here, the second one in from the right. And that duplicates that path. So now I can select the path and fill it with something else. Well, I've opened some patterns that come shipped with Illustrator and you can get to those patterns by clicking this disclosure triangle here in the swatches palette. Choose Open Swatch Library and then Patterns and then Decorative. And I've just opened up the Vonster patterns just because it saves me from having to create another pattern just for the purposes of showing you that this is a transparent hole here. So with my second path, the bottom path selected, making sure that I have Fill selected here, I'm just going to fill it with a pattern piece from the Vonster patterns. And you can see that it very clearly is a transparent pattern. Any one of these patterns placed behind my pattern shows that it is a see-through pattern. Now we wouldn't necessarily need to have another pattern below. We could have something that was painted. We could have a bitmap texture. We could have a bitmap image. There are all sorts of things that we could place in a layer below the pattern that we've created. But anything placed behind it is going to show through the holes. And each of these holes has its own little drop shadow applied to it. So there's how to create a pattern which instead of being for example, circles, this time is holes with some built-in drop shadow shading in it. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom and a whole lot more.